all right so welcome back to the channel so in this video this is the animation that will be recreating sort of yeah we'll be recreating that and yeah a tad a bit complicated but a lot to learn and this piece actually was inspired by bees and bombs so dave white and if we just take a look at his website if i just refresh the page we will be greeted with this awesome animation and yeah uh, he did this in houdini we'll be doing it in blender and yep uh, amazing piece as you can see you can just you just keep looking at it and you just don't know when to stop but in this one we'll be using blender to recreate that i already made an attempt but that was not really accurate but this one will be very very accurate and of course my version is a bit different because yeah i wanted to have some variation but of course at the end of the tutorial you will be learn you will be able to learn or you will be able to make sorry you you will be able to make the exact same animation like this one so without any further ado let's just go to blender so i'll just let me just close this and yeah here we are in blender and this is the scene so a tad bit different uh, for those of you who have been paying attention you'll see how different this is but don't worry you'll be able to recreate that exact same animation anyway so first things first whenever you see animations like this whenever you see looping animations you have to just analyze it frame by frame that way you can understand the logic that is um, happening at the end of the day so uh, what i want you to do is just focus if i can turn on my overlays right so focus on this cube okay so just focus on that and i'll just disable my overlays now so as the cube moves and so as the animation plays you'll notice that the first cube completes one entire cycle okay so that's what it does now i want you to take a look at and yep overlays are off so <laughs> now take a look at the second sphere right so let me just turn off overlays and if i hit play you'll notice that this one actually completes one cycle but then it also completes the second one so hopefully you guys are starting to get a, to see a pattern over here so now focus on the third one okay and as i hit or as i move along the timeline you'll notice that it completes one cycle it completes the second cycle and then it completes the third cycle so this is exactly what is going on okay so during the entire animation uh, the first one, the first innermost uh, sphere in this animation, with, with respect to this animation, it completes one cycle, but the second one completes two cycles, the third one completes three cycles, the fourth one will complete four cycles, and it will go on and go on as long as they are iterated, they will, they'll keep on completing the number of cycles they are away from the first one, okay? So that's literally the logic behind this one, and that's what we will be doing. So let me just actually, you know add a new blend scene here because we'll be going back and forth for explanations anyway hit general and yeah so basically <laughs> i keep saying basically but yeah then the 3.2 is out you know so just grab all of that it's it's really cool not that i know <laughs> the differences but yeah grab the latest version okay so i'm just gonna do the camera and the light and i'm gonna select my cube top view and hit new and delete the group input node so first things first we need to create the geometry all right so how are we going to do that we're going to add a curve spiral and why curve spiral well i'll let you know that in a sec but first of all let's just see how that looks and all right so that's cool and it well it sort of looks like this right so uh, basically uh, it has a few settings to mess around with so resolution if i set this to three you'll notice that it is sort of similar to what we have over here, the triangle. So the reason why it is not connected is because we have two separate, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, <laughs> panels, two sockets to work with. We have two separate parameters. Parameters is the right word. So we, we have two separate para parameters to work with, which is the start radius and the end radius. So the start is set to one, end is to two. If I set them all to one, look at that that is just looking like the triangle we have over here but now if i move it you'll see that it has a tad bit of height to it and that is because we have height over here so if i set that to zero not a problem that's cool so now it's time to instance the 
uh, the sphere on it so basically we're gonna if we are going to do that with the help of a sample curve uh, node and basically what this node does is it collects information uh, will basically position tangent and normal along the curve all right and now if I add a UV sphere okay and if I add a transform node transform node there we go and if I connect the position to the translation so we are moving this this UV sphere to the position along the sphere then let's see what happens so if I just do that look at that of course the radius is a tad bit big so let's just reduce that and there we go so basically uh, again what this uh, what this node does is it basically gives it is basically giving us the positional information along the curve and it also has a length and a factor parameter so if I select the factor and if I go from 0 to 1 you can see that it completes two cycles right it completes two cycles and the reason why it completes two cycles is because we have two rotations set over here so if I just uh, increase the height by one meter and if I change the rotations you'll see this is what it does so you if you recall the first the first iteration right the first sphere it completes one cycle right so basically we just need one over here in the rotation and the height needs to go down to zero all right so that was pretty cool and this is the first iteration and you'll be surprised but this is half of the work or actually yeah half of the work here is done so now what we're going to do with instead of duplicating this again and again and again we are going to create a node group and we'll basically iterate it now let me explain what i am talking about so basically just select everything you've done and hit control g and boom you are in a node group and you can see over here we are inside geometry nodes and inside that we are in a node group so if you have a tab look at that so a single group and if i can just duplicate this and view this and you can see nothing is changing so first of all we would like to have a few parameters exposed so that way we can control things outside from the outside so we don't have to tap back in all the time so one of them being resolution so let's connect resolution over here rotations the start now the start and the end radius in this case they have to be same so what i'll do is i'll just go over here by hitting n select the start one i'll just delete the start from it and basically just connect that to the end as well and of course we don't need to mess with the height factor so yeah that's there and of course this is what will be animating so basically i'll just connect that over here <laughs> i keep saying basically anyway so any data right so this will be the animation data which is what we'll be modifying cool so now if we tap, if we tab out let's just hit n right so we have a cool little uh, node group <laughs> so if i duplicate this right and if I add a join geometry node, put it put it right over here. And if I connect that, and if I set the resolution to 300, I'll just increase the radius by a tad bit. You'll look you'll notice that we are getting this pattern. So basically, like we talked, uh, we just have to you know keep duplicating this, and yeah, we will be good to go. But again, being in geo nodes, this is like like the first thing you know you have duplicate this set this to four and set this to something a tad bit higher then again duplicate this then connect that i mean sure this might be what you're looking for but again this is not yet there you know we since we are in geo nodes we have to make it super procedural meaning we have to make it less of a bit of a pain in the ass for us all right and this may seem easy but you'll be surprised that there is an easier way so let's tackle that okay so what do I mean by there is an easier way? So basically what I'm talking about is uh, we have to sub create some sort of relationship between uh, these two, all of the node groups uh, such that if I just duplicate a node and put it in the stream, it should automatically create the geometry, right? It should, it should just automatically create it. We don't have to waste any time. We don't have to replug anything. We don't have to change values. It should just procedurally create the next step in the animation, all right? So we just have to work once and then that's it so as if i just duplicate it put the node right over there then boom the next step is already ready so you don't have to change anything so the way we are going to do that is by exposing parameters right so let me explain what i'm talking about so currently we have this resolution rotation radiation uh, radius and animation data right but these are all inputs so why not we expose them so after geometry this will be the radius sorry resolution radi uh, rotation radius and the animation data right and if you take a look uh they are all over here so they're exposed but you'll also notice that in the second node 
they have been exposed. So yeah, one thing that you need to know about these node groups is that when you duplicate them, there, there, there is a second variation of them in this, but they are actually linked to each other. Meaning that if I go in here and if I delete the sample curve node, and if I tab out, you'll notice that in the first one, it has been deleted. So that is something you have to take care of. And all right, so yeah, that's one thing. But how are we going to use this, right? To do what we were just talking about? Well. Uh, basically, now, this step right here, right? So we are basically joining these geometries together. This step seems a bit manual to me. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's just delete this, okay? And I'll just tab in the first one. And what I'll do is I'll create, uh, where is it? Where is it? Hmm. Uh, yeah, in the group input node. Basically, what I'll do is I'll create another geometry socket. Right? I think we're in the output. Eh, my bad. Let's go to the input. Let's create a socket right over here. This will be geometry. I'll bring it up and I'll just call it uh, geometry. Yeah, let's just call it geometry, right? And then I'll select this, right? And hit CG. So for join geometry, I'll connect that over here and I'll connect this right over here. So now nothing has changed. But if I connect this, you can see what has just happened and this is what I'm talking about you know I just want to keep on just putting nodes over there and it should automate it and that's what we want to do so but this is really a simple example so now you'll notice that we have resolution over here and we have resolution over here so resolution resolution rotation rotation radius radius and radius right so what happens if we connect them well let's take a look so if I connect the resolution to resolution rotation to rotation and this is what I meant by you know having the same names on the inside on and on the outside so that way you can just connect it using the node wrangler add-on so now if i dive deep you'll notice that nothing has changed and yeah so basically we have th resolution so three resolution over here that is being put over here right so if i tab in so three resolution that is exactly what is going inside over here so that's cool but what we want is when what what we want is basically when we connect the next group right so when we connect or when we add the new group new node group the resolution, the rotation, the radi uh, the radius, they should all increment by one because that is exactly what is going on over here. So we have three vertices or three resolution. Then when we add the next one, it is four, then five, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on and so forth. So let us dive in. And basically what we have to do is, well, add a math node over here, right, in the resolution. And let's just change this to, well, let's just change the value to one, right? That is cool now you'll notice over here so let me just mute this right the minute i add it it does change but it also changes in the first one and we really don't want that all right so basically uh, since they are linked everything we do in this one is also being done in this one so a workaround that is to unlink them so over here we have this two icon enabled right so if i just click that boom so now these guys are unlinked so now if i go in the first one Sorry, yeah, if I go in the first node group and if I control X, hit control X to delete, to delete that, you'll notice that that has been deleted. So now it is high time to label these node groups. So I'll just call it main iter. So this will be the main iteration and this will be the rest of the iterations. I T E R. There we go. So already we have uh increase the resolution and let's just hit ctrl j to label it f2 and just let's just call it resolution and i'll just bring this up all right and now again uh for the second one right uh you'll notice let's just let's take a look at this one the second one throughout the entire animation it completes two full cycles now two full cycles mean the rotation they have to increase by one and let me just tab out of it and here the rotation is set to one therefore it is also set to one over here so we just basically have to increase it by one and that that the incrementation will remain the same you know everything that is happening over here when we add the next node it should increase by one right so that is basically basically automating it so again the same thing add a math node put it right over here set it to one and i'm sure that would have changed so it control j f2 and rotation there you go so if we tab out, uh, yeah, rotation is done. And now it is time we deal with the 
radius all right so the radius now in this case it really depends on what you want it to be okay this is super super subjective so i'll just add a math note if i can spell it right right and then i'll just set it to something like this again it's really up to you this one it's up to you you can have it as big as you want so i'll just call it red all right so there we go so uh it's done so if if you think everything is right try duplicating it look at that and if i connect it you'll notice that hey wait a second everything just went to hell so why did this happen all right so give it a second okay give it a second to think why did this happen while well, i just have a sip go ahead all right <laughs> assuming you guys have an idea but for those of you who know, have no idea what's going on uh let me just quickly give you the answer so in the first uh iteration right we are basically outputting these values the rotation the uh, the resolution the radius and etc etc right and then they are being put over here right but when we add a new node sorry so yeah when we duplicate it and put it there and when we connect it uh instead of the latest value so instead of these values so this modifies modified values being pushed over here we are receiving the same old values right and we don't want that instead what we want to pass down so we instead what we want to communicate to expose right are the latest changes that we made to the geometry so hopefully that makes sense so to do that what i'll do is i'll just delete these connections and now after geometry what we have we have resolution so i'll just connect the resolution then we have the rotation so rotation the radius which is right over here and the animation data the animation data should remain same it doesn't really matter all right and now if i tab out you'll notice that we have a third piece of geometry created look at that so now if i duplicate it and if i connect it <laughs> take a look that is what I'm talking about iteration. That is what I'm talking about automation. And that is what I mean by proceduralism. So I can just keep on duplicating and keep doing this. And the geometry will keep on filling. It, it That's just how it's going to happen, you know. You don't have to do anything. You have already done the work. And now it's all about are you satisfied with what is going on, right? So yeah, so yeah. So now it's time for us to basically animate it and talk about a few more things. So the tutorial is not yet over because if you take a look, if I just, you know, I, I guess if I, if I turn the render more on, uh, we are in AV. Uh, yeah, this is, the line is being recognized. That's cool, but there are no lights. Uh, but yeah, if I just turn, turn on, turn off the overlay, you'll notice that the geometry is gone. Right, it, it's just gone and the reason is because we haven't converted the curve to a mesh so it is just a very thin line and the and the software won't recognize it so we have to deal with that but first let's get animating so how are we going to animate this well basically we have the animation factor over here and they are all connected so now if i turn this around you can see that it is already doing the thing so as it goes from zero to one it basically does what is going on over here because if you take a look right uh, within the entire frame animation some of them they just complete one cycle while the rest complete two three four five and six so it is irrespective we just have to turn this up so either you can animate it you know keyframe it or what i like to do is add a scene time node bring up the timeline then connect a map range node and the map range node basically it, it will basically it takes a value and then we need to tell it the min and max of it and then it will remap it to the new min and max so we have the frame value right over here right so if i set it to the start to zero so that the start is set to zero and the end is set at 250 so 250 and now uh, we basically are just remapping it to zero to one because that's what we want over here zero to one so within this entire animation the frame value will be remapped from 0 to 1. So that's exactly what we want. So if I hit play, you'll see it is doing its ever-loving awesome shit. That is what we're talking about. So now let's go ahead and convert this mesh to a curve. So let's just go over here. And this is exactly where the spiral is being connected. So now if I add a curve to mesh C2M and it needs a profile curve. So what I can do is just expose that parameter 
and okay need to first of all go over here and take the in the input right so over here just push up the profile curve because i want the animation data to be the very last thing right and now let's just go inside check fill caps and now over here we just need to connect a curve so a uh, curve circle really will do the job for me so let's just connect that over here oh look that is just something weird all right so yeah i think point 0 0.02 would work fine for me but you'll notice that uh, the rest of it 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 didn't work for them and that is because they are not linked anymore all right so before i link it let me just <laughs> save this file and this is the third time i am recording this hopefully the last one <laughs> so let's just go over here again add a c to m curve to mesh and guys organize things a bit better <laughs> this is a tutorial so i'm not putting too much effort into it but you might want to organize it right and basically now what i can do is either connect this right just like that and it would work or what i can do is go to the main iteration select the profile curve right over here and expose that as well right and bring it up yeah and i can do the same thing uh, over here since we are we are inputting it but in the rest iteration we're not exactly outputting it so just simply push it on or just carry it forward don't really know the exact english words for it but now you can see they all have a profile called input sorry input input is this and they have an output so just connect them and look at that that is working just fine so we have control over the curve but we don't really have a con con some control over this sphere so let's just dive in and let's just copy this uh, remove that and let's just paste it over here all right so that is there and again it needs an input right so this geometry node this geometry input it it for this one it doesn't really work right because we're not actually using a geometry so instead what i'll do is i'll just use i'll just select sphere over here sphre right and yeah just delete this joint geometry node because we really don't need that and instead we'll be connecting our sphere to it so now if i connect the sphere over here look at that it's all fine and we also need this sphere do you know we need to output it so let's just go over here and bring this sphere second that's cool so now we have a sphere output so now basically we need to cre create the sphere output and input for the rest iteration and that will be all so geometry right over here uh, where is it the sphere output is the second one all right so second one so let's just duplicate this and all right said already set to geometry so sph okay if i can spell it ah, the, my mic is always in the way so let's just connect that to the output and let's just bring it up and look at that so now if i connect it nothing is happening and the reason is because we are still using this so instead let's just disconnect that and instantly all the spheres will be gone and let's just connect this sphere there we go and we can delete this cool so now all the changes we can make all the type of changes from the outside and you can even you know Add a group input, add a group input node, and just output it over here. But I don't think it is that necessary for this one. So basically, that's it. That is the tutorial. So for the shading part, right? Uh, and again, let me just talk a bit about proceduralism. So let's say you are not happy with the speed, right? So what I'd recommend is uh, updating or increasing the uh, time of the animation. But again, you'd have to come in here and put in the values. So what I what I like to do is just copy it as a new driver over here just paste the driver and for those of you guys who want to make it like properly loop just render the animation out and then when you have the sequence ready just delete the last frame because if you take a look the first frame and the last frame they are the same so you just need to you know delete the last frame so yeah from till 499 and then it should be back over here but yeah uh since it's just a frame it really won't matter that much but yeah for those of you guys who have OCDs like me that is what you do so now it's time we take a look at this uh the shading so ev that is all fine uh let's just see uh i think we need to go to the film and select transparent because i wanted to have control over the background and i can just go over here go to the shader editor and we have a sh shader already 
over here so let's just call this i'll just let it be material and basically what i did is i just added a rgb set it to black and connected that and over here what we need to do is assign that material so for the uv sphere i'll just add set mat so set material and then just select the material so now if you take a look uh it yeah it's black so for the curve right so for this curve you you can't do this and the reason why it's not working is because this is the part where it's getting converted to a measure this is where it will need to add a set mat note and add the material and you'd have to do that so i'll just copy this material note you'll have to do that again for the uh for this the rest iteration and voila so that is that so currently it looks a tad bit ugly so i'll just go to the shading wall shading turn this white and yeah disable the overlays and look at that so uh let me just add a few more iterations to it and again it is all about this so by the way for those of you guys who want the shortcut it is alt right click drag just keep on doing that you know until you're satisfied <laughs> yeah i think I'm, I'm gonna stop now so basically yeah this this is it this is the animation all right we put denoising all right cool now we're back all right so yeah this is the animation this is how you would achieve this effect and if you were if you were paying attention you would notice that uh this one is a tad bit different than the than the one bees and mobs made uh, bees and bombs made bombs right okay, made because if you take a look at his animations which is now gone so i need to dave white bees and bombs dot com so if you take a look at this animation you'll notice that the very the, the circle the innermost circle right it is the one that is completing a hell lot of cycles and it's the outermost circle that only completes one whole cycle so yeah that's that's really the difference and i guess the geometry difference because i think in houdini you can decide uh when the start and end of the curve is but uh over here i think it's this one that we just made yeah this one uh, uh and by the way for those of you guys who think it is a bit faint just go over here and set it to standard so yeah that's that but yeah so basically with the sample curve node right we, we really can't decide when the curve starts and ends so so we are forced to you know have this location as the starting point but in his animation uh this right over here this is yeah to this point this is exactly where the animation starts so that's it and i think he has somehow managed to rotate the curves and you know make sure that they all have a flat line at, over here again it's not that difficult i'm sure i just didn't put that much effort to recreate the whole thing but again now you guys have the knowledge now you guys have uh like now you guys know how you can iterate things right so basically you guys can actually remake the entire animation that bees and mounts made so yeah that is sort of the homework for those of you who followed along who've been there who want to test the knowledge i want you to just try to make the animation that he made and it's actually pretty easy it's it is really easy so if i just go over here and show you guys the sos we do uh save why not right this animation if i show it to you guys look at that it's it's the same thing where the innermost sphere it is completing a hell lot of rotations or cycles it's and it's the outermost that is completing uh well less <laughs> less less cycles yeah so it is not impossible it is completely achievable and that is your homework so if you've done that please send it to me i would love to see it and for those of you guys who create the exact same animation we did over here i would love to see that do you know uh, experiment with the shading you know try to make some cool shaders and it's it, it's really up to you but whatever the result i would love to see it and we have a discord server uh it is full of awesome people <laughs> it is it's truly full of awesome people it's a small server but it's 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 there so yeah you're welcome to join there share your work get some critiques and make some tutorial requests if you want to and for those of you guys who want to dive deep into this topic i have a in-depth tutorial on my patreon so you can go and watch that one uh, if you feel like this is not explaining a lot of things so yeah i completely get that but anyway so those of you guys who watched it who've been who watched the whole anime the tutorial thank you so much it really means a lot and bees and moms if you are watching this <laughs> good work man uh, amazing job keep doing what you do and yeah 
I love to see more of your amazing work in the future. But yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, be infinite.